Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. I know you're all excited to see each other over a after a long weekend. Um, just to let you know that the uh, glitch that we had with the live streaming uh, of our, our meeting today has been resolved, and so we are now um, able to live stream the meeting, which is very useful uh, for uh, those people who can't be here with us, but also uh, very useful for us to reflect on um, the presentations that we're going to receive. So this is the, uh, the uh, submissions uh, part of the representation review for the 2016 local authority election initial proposal and we are established as a hearings panel and uh, we will commence the submissions today uh, with um, James Cagle and if you'd like to come forward. Uh, one component of our system that has broken down quite significantly, as you can tell by the microphones in front of you, um, is the sound system. So uh, if you could speak clearly into the microphone, that would be very useful for us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present the, uh, my submission. Uh, it is, uh, hopefully, compared to many that you have to consider today, uh, relatively short and simple. Uh, I want to start by saying that I uh, I'll, uh, I really congratulate the work that the Council has done uh, so far to date. I thoroughly support the single member uh, 16 councillor model that has been put forward. I think it is a fundamental principle of local government uh, and local democracy that uh, people are served, uh, the people in the communities are served by representatives who are close to them. And I think this is the easiest and best way of achieving that. So. Whatever else I have to say today in terms of uh, comments or changes that I wish to put forward, I want to be very clear I support this model uh, over any other. That said, I really only have uh, two uh, alterations that I wish to propose to the panel, and they are in the service of um, trying to avoid community severance, uh, which is one of the fundamental principles that uh, you have to work to. So really, uh, they deal with, um, I guess if you want to think of it in a single ward, they deal with the boundaries of the Papanui ward, or uh, more clearly, they deal with the boundaries of the Papanui Ward as it relates to the Central Ward, and then they deal with the, the northern boundary of the Papanui Ward as it relates to the Marshlands Ward. So if I start with the boundary between Papanui and Central, and the Central Ward for Councillor's reference currently sits at the far end of the room on the map, and I think I have found uh, the Papanui Ward, which sits behind Adair, uh, there. Yes, right there, Adair. Excellent. OK, so first of all, uh, the current boundaries that are proposed between the uh, Papanui Ward and the Central Ward as it relates to uh, the north-western end of the Central Ward that's running down Papanui Road currently severs the community of uh, St Albans. The, the proposed boundary runs straight down St Albans Street, effectively all the way through to Cranford Street. Uh, it's a community I'm intimately familiar with. I grew up there. I've lived many years in and around that community. Uh, and it does sever St Albans. Uh, and, it, and it frankly uh, misses the opportunity to set a far stronger boundary down an arterial road. Uh, lacking other geographical features uh, in, in an urban environment, arterial roads are, form a, are usually a really good place to set a boundary. Uh, and so I propose simply moving that boundary further north up to Innes Road. So the new boundary would have to run further down Papanui Road, down Innes Road to Cranford Street, and then back down Cranford Street to join with the, with the existing proposed boundaries. Uh, that would enable much more of the catchment for St Albans Primary uh, to fall within the central ward. It would enable uh, the Christchurch Catholic, uh, St Albans Catholic School plus the parish to fall properly within uh, the central boundary and the local parks to fall within that boundary. Uh, there is certainly some community crossover across Innes Road, but it is much less than you see along St Albans Street. Uh, at the moment, you would leave the doctor's surgery on one side of the boundary and the pharmacy on the other side of the boundary, by way of example. Um, it's a relatively easy change. It, by my counting, uh, moves 1,700 uh, uh, people uh, into the Papanui Ward. Uh, sorry, into the Central Ward from the Papanui Ward, but Central is significantly uh, at, the, at the low end of the tolerance, so there is room to accommodate that move. Having done that to the Papanui Ward and, and, and taken voters from it, uh, there is a much larger, I think, uh, aberration in the boundary proposed for the Papanui Ward, and it's very difficult to see uh, on the map behind Adir, uh, just because it is difficult at a long range to spot the roads that are outside a boundary. 
But Adair, if you can identify QE2 drive. Yeah. The area that sits south of QE2 drive, but outside of this existing boundary, uh, this existing ward, ought, in my view, sit within the Papanui ward. Fundamentally, you are severing the community of Maidaho, including separating from the large residential population of Maidaho, Maidaho High, which currently sits in the Marshlands ward, completely cut off from most of the residents of the Marshlands ward by that state highway. You have an opportunity to set a strong ward boundary mm. on the state highway, uh, thus allowing Maidaho to be a continuous community, uh, and, um, and really leaving Marshlands where its natural boundary ought to lie, which is the state highway. Yes, there are a couple of opportunities to cross the state highway for pedestrians and cyclists, but that literally is it. There isn't much more opportunity for communities south of the state highway to be part of a community north of the state highway. And the urban development and growth that's, that's um, uh, uh, planned for, the infrastructure that's proposed, is only going to continue and exacerbate that severance rather than, uh, rather than alleviate it. So right now is the right time to set a strong boundary for the Papanui Ward. It would therefore, if you take the two moves in in conjunction, stepping the southern boundary north slightly up to Innes Road, no, no, the other boundary here, down on the bottom, where you've got the kink. There, there, there. Yep, if you step that north a bit, but also step the northern boundary north a bit, you will, you will end up with a much stronger, forgive me for the word, use the word, you will end up with a much stronger polygon. Uh, if you only do one of those changes, you'll end up with a dumbbell of a, of a ward really two communities, the community of, the community of Shirley on, on, the, on the eastern side and the community of Papua Nui on the other side. So you really do, I think, need to take both changes together to end up with one large supported ward. So you would take QE2 drive right down to Martian Road? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep, straight, straight on from where, yep, that's exactly it, straight down. Yep. And that is rather magically, and I had no intention of arriving at this, it is basically, again, 1,700 voters. So it means if you take both moves uh, together, you change the overall population of the Papua New Ward by a couple of hundred people, no more. So it really doesn't have an impact on the, on the quota for the Papua New Ward. Mm -hmm. Really what you're doing is transferring 1,700 from Marshlands all the way through to Central. Marshlands, I understand, sits at the top end of the quota, yeah. so there is absolutely room to, to accommodate that change, and as I said earlier, there is room to accommodate the extra 1,700 people within Central. So you end up with no real impact on quota, but two stronger communities uh, as a result. And those are my only comments. Excellent. Thank you. Um, do we have questions? Uh, Pauline? Sorry, can I just get you to clarify when you go up to, you move the southern boundary up to um, Innes. Yes. And you go across to Cranford. Yes. And then down how far? Or down to, down to where the existing boundary is. Uh, so uh, I'd have to... St Albans Street. St Albans Street, yes it is, thank you. Yeah, Westminster Street, St Albans Street. Uh, yeah, no, on, that, on the Cranford Street side it's, 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 it's Westminster, yep. Yep, that line. Yep, that line. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, uh, Ali. Thank you. Hi James, I just wanted to, oh no we're not using that are we? Um, I just want to have it. Um, when you talked about the single councillor uh, model, yeah. um, which obviously is a big part of this as well, and you support that entirely, is that in any way dependent on the number of people that councillor is representing, the uh, geographical area? Because I understand what you're saying, but surely there are some parts of that model that um, will make a difference on how that representation can be so effective? I think you've got, you've got a, a, a number of principles in tension, and so what you're really trying to do is find the balance between those principles. Um, uh, talking earlier, talking about the, uh, the Environment Canterbury proposed model where you've got um, the government proposing four representatives for mm -hmm. urban Christchurch with no ward boundaries at all. And I think the principle of operation there is communities of interest. I don't think there really is a different community of interest for Eastern Christchurch versus Western Christchurch for regional council activities. I think you've got very strong arguments within a true local, uh, within, a, within a council sense uh, for different communities of interest uh, between little different, the different urban villages around Christchurch. So I think, one, you want to have single members located as closely as you can to those communities, so small wards, 
single representation, then you're trying to balance effectiveness of governance. So you don't want an enormous council. You don't want mm. a council of 50, for example. You wouldn't be able to operate. So you're, you're trying to balance things. Um, having said that, no, I think you, you would strongly advise not to try and come up with a mix of models where you've got single representatives in one place and double representatives in another or anything like that. I think you've got to balance it within a, within a model that means all councillors are equal. You know, they're not they're within the tolerance representing the same number of people. Um, so the big change that occurs there obviously is, is size. Um, of all of the things I think you can you, you have to cope with, I think that's one you can cope with as opposed to having one councillor representing twice as many people but having to share that with another councillor versus one who has sole discretion in their particular place. Since we've got about 20 seconds to yep. go, just your thoughts on representation that's not geographic. We've had a lot of young people say to us, we, don't, we can't get elected on a ward, um, how about you have some at-large positions that we could run for? I don't support at-large positions other than the mayoralty. Yeah. Um, because I think the mayor rightly represents the whole of the city. I think uh, as you age, and I'm sorry to make it sound it's like I'm me. arrogant yeah. against no, no, as I age, as I, as I leave the youth um, or left it long behind, um, I think you, you understand increasingly as a ratepayer, as a, as a homeowner, um, the, the pure functions of council which are related to geography and location. Yes, there are citywide issues, and yes, the youth uh, deserve a voice through that. I'd say get involved in your local community and, and get elected yeah, that way. it's kind of complexity, though. Decision-making, complexity requiring a range of people uh, sitting around uh, a table, and uh, uh, we don't want the table looking too much like itself. Pale male and stale? Yeah, no, yeah. but, but I, 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 I wasn't going to say that out loud. Oh, but there you go. Um, but I, I think... Um, I'd have to look at the data properly, but I don't think we have a problem of getting young people elected to community boards. Right. Really. And I think that really ought to tell you the, the answer. There isn't a problem. Okay. Good. Well, look, thank you very much, and um, a great way to start. So, thank you. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, could we now have